All right, I'm Michael Willis with USA Wrestling. Uh, today we have another edition of Moments Off the Mat. I'm joined by Liam Cronin. Liam, how are you doing? I'm good, man. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Good. Thanks for having, having me. My pleasure. So you recently have been in the headlines. You're transferring to Nebraska, a graduate transfer, I believe. You were uh, starting 125-pounder for Indiana this year. Uh, how'd that happen? Um, so basically, you know, we had Brock Hudkins and I battling for a spot last year. And unfortunately, he was injured at Midlands and I was able to step in, you know, and take the spot. But uh, it just kind of came down to Brock and I and, you know, what the best move was going to be for me in my next year and accomplish my goal of being NCAA champion. And after talking with Angel and some of the rest of the coaching staff and my family, we thought it'd be best that I'd enter the transfer portal. And, you know, now I'm going to be a part of a great Nebraska wrestling team. And it's just, it's all worked out. So were there other coaches uh, or teams that were interested in you besides Nebraska? Yeah, I was uh, actually talking with Wisconsin. They're like my top four, um, Clarion University, Fresno State. Um, talked with Ohio State a little bit, but my transfer credit or my uh, credits couldn't transfer over. So I kind of... I had to limit it down to Clarion, Fresno State, and uh, Nebraska because my credits weren't going to be able to transfer through a lot of schools because I wasn't going to be able to graduate with my degree soon enough. But we kind of figured it out where I could get all my schooling done this summer and be able to get to Nebraska. So it all worked out. What did you like about Nebraska and the coaching staff, and, and why do you think you're a good fit there? Um, I mean, obviously the team is great. I mean, up and down the lineup, uh, all 10 of those guys, I think they qualified 10 this year. They're in hunt for a national title, and I just want to be a part of a great team with a great values, great culture. And, you know, talking with Coach Manning and Coach Schneider on the phone, they just seem like great down-to-earth dudes. And I think I was able to build a good connection with them, you know, over the phone. And I, I like what they had to say and what they had to offer. So, I mean, it just worked out. I feel like a lot of people still don't have a thorough grasp of how the transfer portal works. Um, could you yeah. go through that a little bit? Yeah, so basically when you want to transfer, I had to talk with Angel and my compliance you know, staff and kind of notify him that, hey, I want to get into the transfer portal and notify him that you know, I was looking to transfer. So basically you sign a couple documents, whatever, and then Angel was able to – I don't really know how it works, but it's like a like a system online that you enter your name and it basically, you know, your name's out there and coaches can contact you and kind of, if you have, if people are interested in you, you know, they can hit you up and I was getting text messages and people were messaging me on social media. And so if you don't want to, if like you decide not to transfer, you can take yourself out of the transfer portal and I could still, I could have still competed for Indiana University. So it's kind of... I mean, I don't really understand it all the way, but I just know that, you know, you put yourself out there and it's kind of like online and coaches are able to have all your information. They're able to contact you and stuff. Yeah, that's interesting. Thanks for uh, uh, sharing a little insight into that. Was it hard to pick a school without visiting any campuses? Oh, yeah, that was the hardest part. You know, I didn't know what I was getting into. I didn't really know. I mean, I've been to Nebraska once before, but not for a recruiting visit. It was for the world team trials, I think, back in 2017 when they hosted them. And I wrestled for the – wrestled the juniors, I think. Yeah, junior freestyle. And so that was my only time I've ever been to Nebraska. And I liked it. I mean, the campus was awesome. I was inside the facilities working out. I mean, I saw where they competed and wrestled. So, I mean, I've been to Nebraska before, but not – being able to take in-person visits was kind of, that was like the hardest part. Yeah, I, I can bet. I mean, unprecedented situation. Uh, so yeah. Good for you for being able to figure out what you wanted to do and, and finding a landing spot. For, for yeah. You. So Nebraska already has a 125 pounder, Alex Thompson. You guys actually wrestled three times last year. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you won in the dual meet, and then you split matches at, at Big Tens. You won the last one, ended up, I think, being the last match of your season, uh, unfortunately. Yeah. Do you plan on wrestling Moth for the spot? Um, I mean, obviously, that's going to be the plan. I'm not too sure what is going to happen. I mean, the coaches are going to 
you know, talk it over and kind of see what's going on. But I'm not sure. I know he was kind of big for the weight last year, and there's been some talk of him possibly going up to 33. But, I mean, if he chooses to stay at 25, obviously I'm the new person coming in, but, you know, I want the spot. My plan is to be the starter, but, I mean, Alex is a great wrestler, and obviously we split matches, but, you know, I'm not too sure of that that plan as yet. Gotcha. So your first couple of years in Indiana, you were behind uh, four-time NCAA qualifier Elijah Oliver. You guys battled in a tournament, I think, not this season, but last season. Uh, he won two to one, so you guys were obviously very close. Uh, this year you were behind Brock to start the season. Can you talk about that and kind of, you know, how tough it is to be in a Division One program and to be close but not be the guy? Yeah, I mean – Going in my freshman year, it was kind of like Elijah was going to be the guy. I was going to redshirt, and I think he had got injured early on the season. And so my true freshman year, I started a couple duels, and then they started Elijah again once he was healthy. But, yeah, those two years where Elijah was the starter and I was kind of the backup, it was hard. I mean, I was grinding every day, doing as much as I could to try and beat him. And, I mean, he's a great wrestler. We battled every day in the practice room. And, when we competed, we know we knew how we, each other wrestled so well. That it was like it was hard to score points on each other. But yeah, I mean, being the backup that wasn't didn't sit well with me. Obviously, I mean, I hated being the backup, but obviously, I supported my teammates. And if that was my position on the team at that time, I did whatever I could to get Elijah ready, and you know, I did whatever I could to get Brock ready at the beginning of the season. So kind of just pushing those guys and trying to get myself better every day was my goal and trying to be the starter. So this year, Brock goes down at Midlands and you step into the role. What does it, what did that feel like for you? I mean, um, I, I'm, you weren't wishing an injury upon your, uh, your team. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously not. I mean, it sucked to see he was having a great year, but I mean, I prepared myself all year, all summer training, going to different places and putting in the work. So I was definitely ready. I mean, I wasn't, I mean, I was surprised to see him be hurt, but once once I saw him kind of go down, I was like, all right, you know, it's I got to step in and I got to do my job, and this is what I've been training for. I mean, it sucks that it had to go this way, and that's how I got the spot. But, I mean, I I mentally prepared myself, was physically re prepared. So, I mean, it wasn't a hard transition at all. So, the, when you started out in the lineup, you started out 0-3. One of those matches was against Spencer Lee, so that's, that's going to be a tough one. But then you won your next straight, yeah. uh, seven straight matches going into Big Tens. And you beat, I think, four NCAA qualifiers, including Devin Schroeder, who was going into the tournament as the number five seed in that, you know, Indiana-Purdue uh, in-state duel. Uh, can you talk a little bit about, yeah. you know, did something click for you? Were you wrestling better? Or, you know, was it just getting it adjusted to being in the lineup? I mean, I think my, my ability has always been there. I think it was the mental side was the biggest part. I mean, I, I think – I mean, I struggled early on in the season with a lot of, like, issues. I mean, unfortunately, I'd, my fiancé and I had lost our daughter in the very beginning of the season. So it was, like – it was a huge hit to, to myself mentally. You know, I was kind of, like, in and out of wrestling. I wasn't sure if I was going to compete. And so just finally, like – I sat myself down and sat down with Angel and the coaching staff and kind of talked about, like, what I can do to get myself mentally prepared. And so, you know, I started reading the book. It was called The Champion's Mind or something. And I would wake up every morning and write my goals down and kind of see what I wanted to do each day to get better. Because going into matches before, I was kind of like, I didn't really have a goal. I didn't really know what I wanted to do in the match. And I knew my ability was there. I just, I wasn't sure why I wasn't being consistent or wasn't winning and I was kind of losing to guys that I didn't think were on my level so I think that eight match winning streak I mean it wasn't a fluke to me I mean a lot of people are like oh you know this guy came out of nowhere I mean in my head my goal is to be a national champ no matter if I lose 10 matches in a row even though like Spencer Lee had teched me in the duel but I think it was finally that I was able to instead of focusing on winning or losing, I was just focusing on, okay, what can I do in this match? Like, what am I best at? What is my best ties? You know, what am I good at? Okay, I'm going to get to that. Like, I'm just, I was more worried about having fun in the process because 
I really, I mean, I had a, a really bad start to the season. I mean, I think it was like, I was like two and 10 the first half of the season. So, I mean, there was no pressure on me to perform. I mean, stepping in the lineup, it was like, yeah, I got to do my job and go out there and get some big wins for my team. But I think I finally just found where I want to be mentally and where I best wrestle at. And that was just not focusing on winning or losing, just continuing to work hard and do whatever I can to be prepared. And when I go out there, just have fun, let loose, and kind of just control what I can control. Um, Liam, I'm, re- I'm really sorry to hear about your daughter. Uh, that I can't even imagine how tough that was to deal with. That's, that's a really hor- horrific thing to, to have to process for anybody. How did you get back in the mindset to wrestle after something that tragic? Yeah, so at the beginning, um, it was hard. I didn't even – wrestling was the last thing on my mind. I mean, I didn't want to go to practice. You know, I, I, wasn't really, I wasn't really ready to see my teammates yet or my coaches. I mean, they were supportive throughout the whole process, and, you know, they were there for <clears throat> my fiancé and I. But it was, like, it was the, obviously the hardest thing I had been through up to that point. So – getting into wrestling was kind of like, I wasn't sure if I was going to want to wrestle ever again or compete. And I know Angel was aware of that. And I had told him that I wasn't sure when I was going to come back. And, but I think I had taken about a week off after we lost her, I think exactly seven days off. And I was like, man, I need to get my mind off something. I mean, I need to wrestle. I don't even think I practice at all. I just, I signed up for the Michigan state open or Angel brought me along with the team. And I was like, yeah, I need to compete. Like, I'm ready. I was like, yeah, are you sure? And I was like, yeah, I mean, I got to get out of, you know, this space that I was in. I was depressed and, you know, feeling down and all those terrible things. But obviously it wasn't the best thing for me to go out and compete right away. I think I had, I went 0-2 or 1-2. And, and then Angel sat me down. I was like, hey, let's take another, let's take a week off competition and kind of just get your head right. And then I think we went to the, Army West Point tournament about a weekend, two weeks later after I'd sat out a weekend and I went 0-2 again. And this is, you know, I was coming off a summer where I made a U23 world team and then I ended up losing that wrestle off. But, you know, I thought I was there. Like, I'm ready to make the next jump. I'm ready to be the starter. Even though Brock had transferred in, in my mind, like I'm the guy, you know. But that mental block early on of losing Waverly was – it was a lot to handle, and I think it had taken me – obviously, I'm still not over it, but I've come to terms to accept it. But I think right around after Midlands, after Brock had got injured and I got the spot, I was starting to, like, feel myself. You know, at practice, I wasn't, you know, kind of down and, like, feeling like, ah, shit, I don't want to practice today. You know, I don't want to do any of this. I just want to be at home. Like, I'm feeling sorry for myself. And I think after – Maybe it was the very beginning of January when we'd wrestled Purdue, and that's when I started my streak. It was like, okay, I feel good. Like, I'm, I need to start, stop feeling sorry for myself. You know, I got to, if I want to accomplish my goal this year of being a national champ, you know, I can't keep feeling down for myself and feeling sorry. Like, I, like I got a job to do, you know, and I got to go out there and compete and wrestle and train hard. And I mean, I was doing that all year, but it was just that mental side that I hadn't conquered yet. And it took a lot of, like, deep digging and looking at myself and reflecting and writing things down and making sure that, you know, wrestling at the, that moment is a big focus. You know, obviously, I had to be there for my fiancé, and I had to comfort her and do all the right things to make sure she's okay. But, you know, I also had wrestling, and I had my goals. So it was like trying to find balance for both of those. Yeah, well, again, it seems like, despite uh, in incredibly terrible circumstances, you still managed to put together a, a very successful year. Uh, it culminated in a, a fifth place finish at the Big Ten tournament. Uh, last match of the season, I pinned Alex Thompson. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how you wrestled at that tournament? I mean, it, it's commonly known that the Big Ten tournament is the toughest conference tournament in the country. Yeah. So, I mean, I – Brackets had came out, and I saw him. I was like, you know, I'm in a good spot. Like, if I win my first two matches, I'll wrestle Schroeder if he makes it to the semis. And I'm thinking, like, yeah, I've beaten him before. Like, that's going to be 
my way into the finals, you know, and I want to crack back at Spencer Lee, you know, because I, I lost him earlier in the season. So, I mean, I wouldn't say overconfident isn't the word going to the tournament, but I was kind of like looking ahead of the competition a bit because I had wrestled Alex earlier in the duel and had beat him. And so I was kind of like, all right, yeah. Like I, my focus wasn't really one match at a time. I was kind of like finals. Like I'm looking, well, you know, I want to be, everyone wants to be a big 10 champ and that's my goal. So I think after that first match, it like humbled me a bit. I was like, all right, you know, I got to take this one match at a time. Cause I lost, it was like 17 to 15 or something wild like that in the first match. I think he had scored 10 points right away. And I was like, open my eyes, like, whoa, what am I doing? Like, this is kind of like the old Liam, like the beginning of the season where I was kind of like flopping around and stuff. So I think after that match, you know, I went back to the the backstage with Angel and he's like, hey, man, you got to step it up. You know, if you're going to go out there and make it to the NCAAs because they only take eight spots and losing the first round is, you know, it's not, not the best position for me. So I think that next, the next couple matches, I just took it one at a time and, I was able to regroup myself and I went back to my notebook I was writing in all year and I kind of just reviewed all the positive self-talk I was saying to myself and everything that I wanted to accomplish at the Big Tens and it just came down to the process and not looking about winning or losing it was kind of just about focusing on myself and what I can do just to you know be successful in the match focus on my position you know my stance my takedowns you know what my stand-up is what my top work's going to be. So, yeah, I mean, it was a my first time wrestling the Big Ten tournament, and it was a great experience. And it was too bad that COVID had to play a part in canceling NCAAs. But, yeah, it was, a, it was an awesome experience, and it was a great tournament. What was your reaction initially to finding out the tournament was canceled? Um, so Angel had texted me and – my teammate Graham a little before it was canceled and kind of notified us, Hey, you know, don't be surprised if the tournament gets postponed. And I was like, okay, you know, a week is not, you know, that's just another week for me to get prepared and kind of rest and do my thing. But I had no idea that it was ever going to get canceled. So I think I was sitting down watching ESPN kind of waiting for news because I think it was the NBA season was canceled. And I was like, Oh, there's no way that, they're going to cancel wrestling. It's five days away or however far it was like a week away. And then when on the ticker, it was like NCAA sports canceled. And I, it was just crazy. I mean, I didn't believe it. I had called angel right away and kind of was like, Hey man, what's going on? And he's like, well, there's going to be no tournament. And if anything, they're going to postpone it like a month or so, but obviously eventually didn't happen. And it kind of was, it hurt a little bit at the beginning because I had put so much work in the last, how many years I was in, you know, four years of college, that was my goal to make it to the NCAA tournament and be a national champ All-American. And I was finally seeing my dream come true. I was wrestling great. You know, I think I'd put myself in a good position at NCAAs to get on the podium. And so that being canceled, it was kind of just like, damn, like another roadblock in my way. But, you know, I think after a couple of days of thinking about it, I mean, there's nothing I really could do. You know, the only thing I could do is just get back to training and start working again for next year. So you do have another year of eligibility left. So hopefully you'll have one more crack at the NCAA tournament. But I want to talk about uh, post-college a little bit, uh, getting ahead of myself. Um, so you've had a lot of success in both freestyle and Greco coming up through the ranks. And most recently you've had, uh, you know, an extreme amount of success in Greco. You won the U23 uh, world team trials, uh, eventually following in a best of three series to Brady Coons, who was in Final X and, and got to challenge for the spot. But do you see yourself pursuing either of those styles post-collegiately? Yeah, I, th I think putting myself in a position of wrestling in Nebraska is it's a good thing if I, you know, if I eventually choose to wrestle Greco or freestyle. But, you know, I think that's, that's on my mind. That's something I would, I would love to pursue is wrestling post-collegiate. And then also, I want to go the route of wrestling MMA or fighting MMA. I think that's real popular, you know, right now, especially for wrestlers. But that's been something that I've always thought about doing. So it's kind of weighing my options of, you know, do I want to continue wrestling Greco or freestyle after? And I think I'm 
in a great position, you know, with the Nebraska RTC. They have Jordan Burroughs and James Green and Tyler Berger and, and some of those other guys. So, you know, uh, that's definitely a possibility, wrestling Greco after a uh, collegiate season. Do you have a favorite style between folk style, freestyle, and Greco, or an order that you prefer the styles? Um, that's a hard one. I mean, I've wrestled so much folk style, so I mean, I'm I'd have to go with Greco. I think I enjoy Greco the most. That's probably got to be one of my favorite styles, and it just comes easiest to me because I have a I have a background in judo. I did judo in high school, so it kind of it's fun. So I think a lot of people see the immediate correlation between freestyle and folk style, and maybe not as many see the value of Greco or how Greco can translate to folk style. Can you speak to how you incorporate uh, Greco-Roman skills and techniques into your folk style wrestling? Yeah, I think obviously you're not able to touch legs in Greco, so it takes that whole aspect out of it. But um, I'd say head position is a huge part in my wrestling. I think especially – Later on in the season, I was able to figure out how I could transition my Greco into my folk style wrestling. So I was able to, you know, utilize and transfer my head position. You know, Greco are always keeping good head position. The hand fighting is the most important part. So I, I would say being able to transfer over or transition over my head position in Greco to, to folk style in my hand fighting and then being able to work in some throws. Like, I think I hit a lot of head and arms at Big Tens this past, yeah, this year. And so I think my, the match against Malik Heinzelman, I was down by two points and with like 12 seconds left, I hit a headlock, head and arm, lefty head and arm. And that's like my best throw in Greco. So, I mean, it just allows me to be more creative and add more to my offense. And my upper body, it just gives me another threat because, I mean, I, I go upper body all the time in, in folk style. So I think, yeah, head position, hand fighting, and being able to work in throws and being creative with that definitely helps. Excellent. Uh, so this is my last question for you, Liam. Uh, with, you know, COVID-19 crisis and, and quarantine being in effect, uh, how are you staying in shape and keeping your wrestling skills sharp? And what advice would you have maybe for some younger kids that want to get back on the mat but can't quite do it yet? I'd say the biggest part, if you don't have a mat, and obviously I, I just had put a mat in my garage about a week ago, but I don't have any partners, so it's kind of like I'm shadow wrestling or throwing a dummy around. But I'd say watching film is a huge part. You know, sitting back and just watching film over and over of those high-level international guys. Um, so, I mean, I've obviously been running, keeping up my conditioning a little bit, um, doing like burpees, push-ups, pull-ups. Um, I'm able to get into a weight room about two or three times a week, so I've been weightlifting. And then I'm also doing manual labor for my dad. He owns a construction company. So that's kind of like my workout from morning till afternoon. I'm like digging holes and digging trenches. So that's a little different. But, you know, I'd say for – people or the youth especially who can't get on a wrestling mat I think it's important to obviously enjoy your family time you know and be with your family um watch film and that's something I do I get a notebook I get my notebook out and I watch film and kind of watch guys that I like to or I like watch wrestling um yeah visualization is key to reading books you know working on that mental side that's something that I've found that has really helped my game because you can but so much working on the physical side, but if you're not working on your mentality and, you know, how you're going to dominate a match mentally, it's, you know, that's a big part of it. So I know I said that was the last question, but I do have to ask, who, who are you watching film-wise? Who are you, some of your favorites? Uh, I love the 65-kilo guy from Japan. I think it's Otaguro or something like that. I like watching him. Um, the guy from India at 65 kilos, like those two. Those are my go-to guys right now who I've been watching. Uh, Bajrang Punia, he's the yeah. to watch too, for sure. So those guys. I mean, that guy from Japan keeps great head position. His counter offense is, you know, something I'm trying to build on and get better at. So I've been taking a lot of notes and watching that. Awesome. 
Well, thanks for coming on today and talking to us a little bit, Liam. Um, you know, hopefully we get to see him back on a mat soon. Um, so, yeah, so, so thanks again. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And until next time. No problem, man. Thank you. I appreciate it.